The White House defends the president's notes and prepared questions when calling on reporters during a press conference. The connections with a former ex-CIA boss, the Biden laptop letter, Russia collusion and Benghazi, and the four possible charges federal prosecutors have considered against Hunter Biden. Joining us right now with more topics on the Hill is Washington insider Armstrong Williams. Good morning to you, sir. First, the White House faced some tough questions after admitting it was normal for the president to get reporters' questions uh, and topics before a press conference, but some said there's a big difference between being briefed on topics and a note card with the reporter's name, the organization, and the exact question being asked. Because now there's some coordination that seemingly is happening behind the scenes here. What did you make of this, Armstrong? Uh, uh, Jet, through no fault of his own, our president is old, and this is what happens to many senior citizens at this stage in their lives and his cognitive skills are declining. And the president, because you know, he is the leader of the free world, needs to come off with intelligent, in control. And so what they have to do, they have to feed him the questions, tell him what the answers are. And this is becoming normalcy for this White House. Even the New York Times wrote an article last week comparing him to Franklin Delano Roosevelt and Ronald Reagan that you can have a president who's declining and the government is so much bigger where you have the pieces in place to run the country. So they're finally acknowledging, uh, and we can all see it, uh, the decline of our president. I'm sorry, I want to ask you about some of these new reports regarding former CIA director Mike Morrell and, and that he used his background to make false Russian collusion allegations and also that he was the one who organized the open letter in October of 2020 falsely portraying the Hunter Biden laptop as Russian disinformation. Shouldn't somebody be held responsible for this? Because he did that after he reportedly got a call from Secretary of State Antony Blinken. What do you make of some of these new reports? Well, first, Jed, uh, Anthony Blinken perjured himself. He did not tell the truth about the coordination with Morrell. And when Morrell went back before the committee and they asked, he finally was forthcoming and he said he did it because he wanted to get Joe Biden elected. And so if he wanted to get Joe Biden elected, uh, Anthony Blinken and all was, they were all in, on the plate. And so Anthony Blinken was rewarded um, by giving, this, giving the Secretary of State slot. And what is unfortunate about all this, Jan, is that the American people believe that just everybody lies. The media lies, Congress lies. No one has the integrity anymore. And so it and it, this has been, we've normalized lying as if it's no big deal, whether it's the president or the Secretary of State. And it, you know what? This is really unfortunate for our our republic. Yeah, very. It really is. And this also comes as federal prosecutors are considering four possible charges against Hunter Biden. So what can we expect? Why do you think it's taking so long to either bring charges or, or dismiss the case? Well, when you're the son of the president of the United States, he controls all levels of government. And you best believe, as any father would, uh, whether your son is guilty or not, they're going to do everything they can, especially this president has so much anguish and so much emotions over losing his wife, losing his son, that that crash still impacts him. And so what he does, he feels guilty. He excuses his son's criminal behavior. And I say criminal. He's a father. And, and obviously, he did everything he could to support his son. And that's why his brother and everybody is tied to this criminal enterprise. And sometimes we forget how far parents will go to support enable and enable their children. But I think what he's coming to the realization of now, Jan, is that there will be some charges filed against him, whether it's tax evasion, whatever it is, they're gonna give him the lowest charges as possible, but he will be indicted for something. But whether he serves time or not, as long as his father is president of the United States and cover all levels of government, he will not go to jail. All right, and very quickly, you have Bill Barr, Dr. Ben Carson on for your live guests tonight, for your voice, your future town hall. I've got 10 seconds. Tell us quickly about that. Well, you know, there are two former cabinet secretaries. They understand the levels of the government. They understand what's going on with Biden and Hunter and Trump and the Republican uh, uh, primaries that are coming up. And so it will be very insightful to talk to these two giants, not only of politics, but of industry. Looking forward to it. Washington Insider Armstrong Williams, great to see you. Have a great day. Thanks for joining Thank us. You.